If you're watching on the VLE or you're floating by on YouTube, a very warm welcome. My name is Rory Lees Oaks and in this presentation we're looking at key ideas in therapy, an introduction to transactional analysis. The aim of the presentation is to form a supplemental study guide for students undertaking the Certificate in Counselling Concepts Level 2 or an equivalent qualification. Well, first of all, let's meet the person who's considered the father of transactional analysis, Eric Byrne. He was born in 1910 in Montreal, Canada, and he died in 1970 in California. He was a Canadian by nationality. His specialist fields were psychoanalysis and psychology. He was the founder of transactional analysis, and his key idea was ego states, and we're going to look at that in a little more detail as the presentation unfolds. Well, the historic developments of TA, um, it was a, a development of the ideas of Sigmund Freud. Byrne believed that we developed three basic sets of behaviours, which he described as parent, adult and child. These were formed by our childhood experiences of being parented. As a consequence, sometimes we find ourselves playing back our parents' attitudes or childhood anxiety when communicating with others. This burn believed could lead to miscommunication with others. And we're going to look at how that works and how that miscommunication can be seen as we move through the presentation. So why are ego states important? Well, they set the tone of how we communicate with others. Now, Byrne came up with what's called a PAC ego model, and on the left you can see a graphical representation of that. It's parents, adults and child. Parents' ego state is behaviours, thoughts and feelings copied from parents or parental figures. It's taught behaviour from parents. Adult ego state is thought behaviour. So this is where we're not thinking about how our parents may have reacted to a situation. This is very much about having how we react to it in an adult in a mature state not thinking about um, perhaps uh, anxieties from from the past but working in the here and now and finally the child ego state well those are behaviors thoughts and feelings we played from childhood so let's have a look at the parent ego state in a little more detail the parent ego state is subdivided the picture on the left shows a critical parent. This ego state is played out when we adopt with other people our parents' critical attitudes. So if you ever find yourself saying to someone, why did you do that or what have I told you and don't throw that knife around, you'll have someone's eye out with it, almost certainly you will be replaying the attitudes that your parents have used or taught you. If you're doing that, then you're in what they call CP, critical parent ego state. The other hand, if you find yourself um, saying things like, there, there, it'll be all right, or shall, it, shall I rub it better? You may, find, you may find that you're in a nurturing parent ego state. This might be useful if you're talking to a child, you know, a five-year-old, but it's not so useful if you're talking to a colleague at work. Imagine, you know, you're banging your knee at work and a colleague said, oh, it'll be all right, shall I rub your knee better? Um, it may not go down too well. The adult ego state, well, it's a mature and able to see situations clearly without being clouded by old associations. And by that, I'm talking about old attitudes that we may have got from parents or indeed fears that we may bring from our childhood. It's a rational state where mutual respect is the order of the day and responses are in the here and now. Respect, agreeing to disagree, compromise, not being manipulated, talking things through are signs of an adult transaction. And finally, the child ego state. The child ego state replaces thoughts and feelings from early years. It can be associated with creativity and intuition. Sometimes less positive aspects, such as anger and a sense of helplessness, can emerge. This ego state is subdivided into free child and adaptive child, and I'm not going to um, explain the difference in this presentation um, but suffice it to say if you're in the child ego state you're almost certainly going to be um, you're almost certainly going to be replaying thoughts and feelings from childhood 
the child's ego state is associated with thoughts and feelings. Um, so things like, uh, hey, this is great, let's have some fun, don't be so boring, I hate you, I'm not sure if I can cope, very anxiety-led feeling, and I'll get you back one day. So if you ever hear anybody say that, I'll get you, then obviously they're in a child ego state. So let's have a look how these ego states work in practice. Well, on the left, the graphic shows a wife and a husband transaction, and this is what's called a complementary transaction. A complementary transaction occurs when a message sent from a specific ego state gets a predicted response from a specific ego state in the other person. Byrne describes a complementary transaction as one which is appropriate and expected and follows the natural order of healthy human relationships. For example, if a wife is grieving for a lost friend, is comforted by a sympathetic husband, her momentary dependency need is answered appropriately as in the diagram on the left. So the wife is in a child ego state, she's feeling vulnerable, she's feeling very sad at the loss of her friend, and she's asking her partner to be supportive. And the, her husband is in, the, is in the parent ego state, the nurturing parent, and it might go something like this. The wife may say, you know, I'm feeling very upset, I'm feeling very frightened, I'm feeling very scared. It's a very childlike state to be, and a natural state given the circumstances. And the husband hopefully will be responding by saying, it'll be all right, you know, they might offer a hug, reassurance, words of reassurance. And that transaction can go on forever. As you can see, it just goes back and forth until, until the wife feels at the point where she can move back into the adult ego state and, and feel that she's okay. Now, sometimes we get cross transactions. Cross transactions are a frequent source of pain between people. Parents and children, husbands, wives, bosses, employees, teachers, students, and so forth. The person who initiates a transaction expecting to get a certain response does not get it. The individual is crossed up and often feels discounted. So if we go back to the wife saying to her husband, I'm feeling very vulnerable after, um, after the loss of my friend. And if the, if the husband doesn't respond in, in a nurturing parent, responds in a, another childlike way by saying well I'm hurt too and I'm sad and I've lost people as well you can see that what happens this is a cross transaction and it won't last very long what will happen is is that they'll both um, the, the conversation will end and it will probably end with the wife saying something like it's all about you isn't it every time I want to speak about my feelings it's all about you so that's what's called a cross transaction now, sometimes we have ulterior transactions, and this is where apparently we're having an adult conversation, but underneath it all, actually, there's another agenda going on, and I'll show you how that works. Say a car salesperson uh, says with a leer to her customer, this is a very fast car, and it may be too fast for you. She's sending a message that can be heard by the customer's adult or child ego state. So on one level, the customer's adult ego hears, well, actually, I'm a painter and decorator. I really don't need a Ferrari. Um, yes, I think possibly I need a van. That's a very adult response. But the child ego state might hear, oh, a fast car. Yeah, I want one of those. And yes, I can drive it. So it could possibly be that the child ego state responds um, instead of the adult ego state. So let's have a look at the key ideas, or what we call trigger vocabulary. You'll need this in your assignment, these words and phrases to put into paragraphs and sentences. Well, it's a psychodynamic school of psychology. Clients can be taught how to strengthen the adult ego state. So the whole idea of TA is to strengthen the adult ego state. So we're making decisions in the here and now, formed by our evidence and our own kind of mature opinions. It's an active directive therapy, so it's very much that the, the therapist would be giving um, direction to the client, teaching the model and asking them perhaps to do homework, getting them to go away and thinking about how they interact with other people. It relies on the therapist, the therapist's skill in, in identifying and analysing the transactions, the clues in the name, transactional analysis. It works with what we call the presenting past. So people who have TA therapy will have identified that their interactions with people 
perhaps aren't really, really great. So they'll be looking at how they've interacted in the past and how they're going to change it in the here and now. It's a psychodynamic model of personal development. There are some criticisms. Uh, one is that we're split into three, parent, adult and child. So critics would say, well, if we're split into three, how can we be a whole person again? There's a bit of a Pollyanna idea in TA um, that it can fix any client issue. Now, I'm aware this presentation is for level two students. So the, the, the discussions and the debate gets a little deeper as we move through the, through the courses. But at level two, the criticism is that it can fix any client issue. Finally, there are many different forms of therapy. A general consensus is best fit for client. One approach will not suit all clients. If you're seeking therapy and need advice to make an informed choice, contact the British Association of Counselling and Psychotherapy. They can be found on the web at www.bacp.co.uk. They can be contacted by telephone 01455 883300 or you can email them at info at bacp.co.uk. For further information, well, if you're watching on the VLE, click the resource tab here and it's above the red arrow and you'll go to another resource to be able to get further information on transactional analysis. If you're watching on YouTube, if you type in www.ericburn.com, that will take you to Eric Burns website where you'll be able to see some more of his ideas. And finally, thank you for watching.